I do not believe this should be happening. Well, I'm joined now by Dr. Lawrence Buckman, former GP committee chair at the British Medical Association. Um, and I'll start with you, Lawrence. Um, as I've said, I'm not wholly unsympathetic. It's not an easy job. It's very stressful. But I see it as a long apprenticeship to a relatively, a relatively well-paid or actually quite well-paid career in the end. Isn't 35 per cent an unreasonable demand? If it was 35% in one lump as a pay demand, I think that would be unreasonable. But it's actually a restoration of where they were from 2008. And I don't think anybody seriously believes that they're going to get a 35% pay rise. That's just not going to happen. But there are ways of negotiating that would alter the pay structure so that the lowest paid would eventually get near to where they're asking for. Obviously, the people in the most senior quote, junior positions uh, wouldn't get such a rise. But it's the, ju it's the most junior that we're interested in. And so I think I understand why, why they feel this way. I wish they wouldn't have taken strike action. I don't like the idea of strikes in the NHS. But the fact is they felt there was no alternative. And I think the sooner both sides get round a table without any preconditions, just talking, is where they will begin to move towards where they both want to end up, which is the health service that works and doctors that stay in the UK. But we can't say, you know, this problem goes back to 2008. We're dealing with a government that's in now. We're dealing with an economy that bailed out the banks, an economy that paid for furlough and for lockdown. We've got a national debt, uh, you know, which is going up every year exponentially. Uh, we simply can't afford this kind of money. And, and I put it to you, Tom, that maybe this is as much the fault of the BMA themselves for allowing junior doctors to fall so far behind. Yes, I'd love it if it was that simple. Um, unfortunately, um, we've been protesting about use, the use of the public sector employees as a, an economic regulator for over 20 years. When they first started doing this, which was several governments ago, we've passed yep. through several different political shades since then, I said that inevitably we would end up with divergence from where we were to where we are now. So it's not surprising this has happened. It's not, it's not even really news. Um, it was obvious to all of us that this was going to happen at some point. And I remember, along with other people who were negotiating with governments at the time, saying, you can't go on doing this. With It's not just doctors and nurses. It's all the other people who work for the state. Mm. All of them have been used as regulators. And now, surprise, surprise, the gap is so big that they're saying we want a significant pay rise. I don't think really 35 percent is credible as a single step. No, but clearly, OK. Some of the people have fallen down such a long way that really we shouldn't allow this. And I don't think the junior doctors, by the way, are a special case. We can chuck in the police, the army, the judiciary and all the other people who work. For yeah, society. and that's the problem. And that's the problem. That if we were to give a 35% pay rise to all the public sector workers, that's almost £100 billion. Pounds. I mean, that's the problem the government's got. But, Lawrence, just sort of final thought. What would you say? Or, 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 I mean, what would a junior doctor say to me uh, tonight? when I say that my 88-year-old father is unwell, is in hospital, is in need of real medical care, he might not get it for the next few days. Oh, I think he's going to get it. He's going to get it from people who are there, which includes all the doctors who are not juniors, uh, which includes consultants, which includes staff grades. There are plenty of people working in the health service. Uh, indeed, I'm one of them. And, um, th you know, there's plenty of people who are at work and have been at work today and will be. And you, your elderly relative, they will get the care they quite rightly need and deserve. But we still have to think, how on earth can we stop mm. this happening again? Because it was obvious it was going to. And here we are. OK. All right. No, Lawrence Buckman, I hear you loud and clear. And I thank you for that reassurance. And I very much hope that you are Right. Joining me next is Dr. Tom Goodfellow, retired NHS consultant radiologist. Uh, Tom, the sight of doctors on picket lines 
I mean, they're not quite shouting scab at workers that go in, but it's it's not exactly befitting, is it? No, it's not fitting at all. And I must admit, I, I find the whole thing very disturbing. Yeah, can, I, I mean, can I start with I, I've, I've never been a member of the GMC. Uh, I was a member of the Hospital Consultants and Specialists Association, which I think was a far more ethical organisation. I think a lot of the problems have been directly as a result of the BBC, of the GMs, of the BMA's activities, which I think Lawrence Buckman really implied. Nice to see him again, by the way, after a long time. Yeah, I mean, this is the point, isn't it? That, 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 you know, the BMA should perhaps have been standing up for junior doctors' pay many, many years ago if they've fallen so far behind since 2008. Uh, and now they're taking a sort of very militant l line at a time when our national finances have never been worse. It's not just, been, not just the, the, the pay. It's also the whole aspect of training and how they work. In um, when was it? When the, in, in 2009, the working time director, the European working time director, was introduced and implemented. Uh, mm. All BMA's support, and that was a disaster. Because when I trained, when I was a junior doctor, we worked in firms and teams with consultants, registrars, senior registrars, housemen. It was very supportive, and we had good accommodation, good support. We felt valued. The working time directive suddenly they're all on shift working. And suddenly they're not part of the team. They're often feeling isolated, unsupported, abused, directed by managers. And they have no uh, ongoing knowledge of the patients because they're on shifts. And so that they don't know the patients and the patients don't know them. The whole continuity of care is lost. And that's been a disaster. Yeah. I remember this very, very well, Tom, of course, because I was a member of the European Parliament all through this period. And I remember these debates and the working time directive was going to stop junior doctors making medical errors. It was going to stop slave conditions. I remember all of the arguments. But now we've got Brexit. Isn't there a chance here to unravel it? Well, you'd have hoped so, wouldn't you? But the BMA have done absolutely nothing to alleviate this situation. As Bob Buckman has said, it is obvious that this was going to happen. Um, and, you know, quite clearly, the BMA and the government should have been addressing these issues, not just of pay, but also of the whole way they work. For example, a few years ago, the um, BMA were in the high court with the government against their own junior doctors to impose a contract which the junior doctor did not want. And that's caused huge damage, loss of professionalism. Oh, I, I, I can barely know what to say about it. It was dreadful decision. And despite what a mess, Tom, dis despite what a mess this is, clearly, as you say, it's not just about money, it's about the way we organise ourselves within the National Health Service, within uh, the doctor's profession. But despite all of that, should they be going on strike for the next six days? The General Medical Council, which is really the ruling body of doctors and ethics, say the first thing they say is you must make the care of your patient your first concern now that seems to have been lost my generation i think we would have struggled to support this strike because this was a really ingrained into us make the care of your patient your first concern people are going to die because of this strike and though i am very sympathetic to the case of the doctors juniors i think they have a case but this is too far. Yeah, I think I agree with that 100%. Tom, thank you very much indeed for joining us.